one of the biggest problems with creating an offer because the offer is the most important part of whatever you do. So this is probably hands down the trickiest section and the most problematic, testing. And tonight we're gonna to talk about testing and we'll give you examples of testing and how to test your offers. Now, we had a question yesterday where people were talking about how many people do you need to make an offer? You need one person to make an offer. And I used the example of dating. You meet someone, hey, let's go hang out. That's one offer. Well, let's go to the movies. That's another offer. Let's, you know, have dinner. That's another offer. You meet someone, you just don't like make this one offer and then expect them to fall down. You make offer after offer after offer. But because of, you know, the nature of romance and there's so much upside that you make the offer they accept, you get company, you make the offer they accept, you develop a sexual partner, you make the offer they accept, you get married. There's a lot of offers made consistently in the dating ritual. And business is somewhat like the dating ritual. One of the things, and I will tell you this, I had, I'm doing affiliate deals now. There's one company I hit up twice. First time they responded, the second time they didn't respond. And guess what? I'm gonna hit them up a third time, I'm gonna hit them up a fourth time, I'm gonna hit them up a fifth time. I'm gonna to continue to make offers. And this is the testing, like the first thing worked, then the second one they will say, now here's the thing, when you make an offer and you start developing negative feelings or you start to go like, well, maybe they're not feeling me, maybe they don't like me, you don't know what happened because I made an offer, right? And I didn't get a response. The person who was answering that email could have been fired. They could have quit. Uh, they could have been, you know, God forbid, sick or ill or something. So what you do is you make your offer and you, you go back and you, you start to dig and creep into, uh, hey, I was talking to so-and-so. Oh, he died. I mean, that happened to me before. I was talking to this guy. It was a good relationship. I knew I was going to get the deal. Then he just stopped returning my calls. And I said, you know what? This doesn't sound like that guy. So I called up the boss or his, I called the CEO because I was dealing with a manager. I called the CEO. I was like, look, I was dealing with so-and-so and, you know, he just seems like a straight up kind of guy and I haven't heard from him. So is he okay? And the guy got quiet and it's like, you know, he died. You know, he was that kind of guy. So, you, you know, you got a really good understanding of him because he would have returned your call. He would have told you yes or no. And I still got the deal. But the thing is, you got to test your offers. Many people will come here on YouTube, they will do Facebook, and they'll try once or twice or for a few months, and they're like, ah, oh, this isn't for me, and they're out. That's just not gonna work. That's really not gonna work. So the first thing is, you have to put in your mind that you're gonna test your offer at least 30 times, even if it's with one person. Now, I'm gonna give you some more of my Craigslist guidance. I wrote, I rewrote this ad, and you know, people were asking, I did not read a copywriting book. I just kind of went with my gut and I tested this content 38 times. I rewrote that ad 38 times. And like I said, I put it up the other day. It still works eight, nine years later. Now, testing your offers and everything's an offer, like your blog, that's an offer. You're offering people's content to read. Why should they read it? You're offering a Facebook post. Why should they read it? Is this shit interesting? If it's not interesting, it's probably not going to convert that well. Now, testing is really, really hard because you need framework. So the first thing is you got to separate your offer. Let's say you're doing a YouTube video. There is the thumbnail you have to test because that's part of the offer and their thumbnails are very important. Then the second thing you have to test is your title, but you have to test the thumbnails. You have to test the title. You have to test the description. Um, I am not doing regular YouTube, so I'm not really concerned about links, but if you're new and you're starting a new YouTube channel, do not put your hot link in the first three or four sentences of your description. You will be penalized heavily unless you can just get a lot of traffic and it won't matter. So let's say you are selling something on eBay. 
How do you test that? Because eBay works like this, right? You put something up that's hot, that has a good ranking, or a high sell through, whatever they do today. Well, you can dramatically increase your sell through rate if you treat your listing as something that needs to be tested. You say you have five or six products, right? And you put up, well, hold on, can you do that? You know, if you got five products of the same thing, can you put up five different ads? I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Uh, I don't think eBay allows that now, but someone, if someone doing eBay knows that's true, true, put it in the comments. But let's go with Craigslist ads, because I know for a fact, and this is something I've done several times, you've got the same item you want to sell. You post it in, let's say it's a sofa. You post it in garage sales, you post it in furniture, you post it in household, and there was another place I would put it. And I would do the same ad, but the picture and the title would be different. And it was amazing how just a picture or a title would make a big difference in performance. That's called testing. So before you give up on your blog or whatever, you're gonna to have to put in some really big data points. And I can use YouTube, I can use Craigslist, I can use, ah, we can use sales, because this is digital introductions. You have a service you wanna sell. Let's say you have a lawn service you wanna sell. How do you test that offer? You go knock on doors, you put flyers out. Now, that is a slow way. What you wanna do, because there's a slow way to do it and there's a fast way to do it. For any service business, if you're willing to give free samples, you're gonna get in the door much quicker. And here's, here's a pitch you can use. Let's say you're doing lawn service and you find some elderly person, all right? And you say, look, you know, I'm offering the lawn service and the first service is free. However, after I cut your grass, I want two things from you. I want your approval, you know, tell me if I did a good job or a bad job, they'll go for that. And then I want you to give me the name and number of three or four of your friends. So what you do, you, you do a good job for free on that. You get the old person and then you call up their friends. And then you don't tell their friends that they're, you, you tell them that it's half off, right? It's like, okay, I'll cut your yard, but it's half off from the normal prices. I have to come by and do an estimate so you don't underbid or overbid. And then you repeat the same thing. It's like, hey, I got you, you got 50% off. Can I get the name and number of four or five of your friends? Then you keep doing that and keep doing that until you build a book of business. This is a valid way of testing your offer, getting in. It's super easy because everyone likes free, everyone likes a discount, but many people will not do it because they would rather be broke than to put forth some trust. Now, another way that you can test your offers, and this is something a lot of the YouTubers do, they'll make five to 20 different versions of their video and test them in certain places. A lot of people don't know that. And that's why some of them are just like killer. And you know, movies do this too. Matthew, that's what I did for my CEO business. CEO business. I gave away free SEO recommendation and it works. Uh, Ganja, what's interesting. Yeah, cause see the thing is, you, you have to parse the difference between online business and offline business. It is really not that much skin off someone's digital dick to give you a free trial on a digital product. They're not gonna use additional resources. They're not gonna to have to hire anybody. What's up, Canada Startup? So it's, it's different, but in real life, when you're dealing with real time, real services, real products, real businesses, real expenses, you can't do the internet stuff. And that's one of the big things because uh, I want it to be really clear on what I'm giving you because this is the stuff I'm doing. Like, okay, here's my offer. Hey, I'm gonna give you training that can make you money if you show up for free. However, if you want the recorded version, you have to pay for it. And I get people, that's how I did 30 Days to 2500. That's how I'm doing digital introductions. That's how I'm gonna do the other courses that are coming this year because it works. And I'll, I'll just tell you, it starts off slow. Uh, typically until I build up five or 10 sessions, people just kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. But then it's like, whoa, he's doing this every day. Oh, there's more offers, I'm curious. Then after a while it gets critical mass, then it goes. But I have to ha extend that trust factor that the content is gonna be so good that people will actually pay for it after getting some of it for free. And that's also part of the key. What do we have here? Uh, it's giving you ideas to start, cool. 
Tiger Shocks, I'm doing NDAs before I test my games. I tell them nothing, not even how to play the game. I also record this reactions. This is a great eye opener. Now let's talk about what Tiger Shark does. When you're doing creation type work or custom work or digital, you know, intellectual property type stuff, that's very different. Um, most people are not going to be doing that. That's a very specialized area. Games is like what seventy hundred billion dollar a year business. Uh, very very different. Most people need to start up at a more reasonable level. This is why I recommend service businesses because that's something you can start this week and start making money very quickly because many people are in this situation where they cannot wait to get paid. Miss Monique, would this translate if my primary business is selling education? I know this works with some markets, but my audience, my target audience is Medicare providers. Okay, uh, I'm gonna need a little bit more information on what you're selling but give me some more frameworks because you know right now it's pretty general and i don't know what you're selling matthew what i learned from contacting 100 people a week is who the decision maker is so now that when i send an offer i know who to send it to now, that's a really good point in making an offer because i'll tell you a quick little story with you know being a salesperson i frequently in my beginning days was talking to the wrong people so making good offers to the wrong people never works so you definitely want to nail down the decision maker. The Hectrix, it's important is it to know what result you want from testing the offer or you just make the offer to see whether it works or not? That's a good question. There is what you want and then there's what's happened. Sometimes you make an offer and you get more than you bargained for and that's what happened with Craigslist. Um, I got to the point that I did so much testing, people knew who I was. It's like I would get emails like, hey, do you have this? I, I know that you've sold this before. Do you have that? So that was an unexpected, uh, you know, an uh, unexpected result from selling stuff. You have your desired effect. You know, you're selling lawn care service. You're selling a uh, carpet cleaning service. You want to clean X amount of carpets per week. So you know what you want to do. So it's bet yes, you do. You need to have some kind of firm framework of what you want, but you also want to be open to something good that may come your way. Swoopman1972, what's up G, thanks for what you do. Sure, thanks for coming out. Now, with the offers of, let, let's separate this because with testing, how you test an online offer is gonna be radically different than you test an offline offer. If you're selling insurance, that's a different game because what could you give away for free? How could you test it? I mean, you, you it's, it's totally different. Like making offers in insurance is important but you're going to need a very qualified candidate because insurance is not like you know an iPhone cover it's like hey I want a brown iPhone cover I want a gray one no one does that you know they buy insurance when they either get scared or they need it or they have a valid change of circumstances in their life Miss Monique how to understand and comply with Medicare guidelines I worked for Medicare and it was over provider EDU. I decided to leverage my exercise expertise and inside knowledge to help doctors consistently get money. Okay. All right. Now let's take Miss Monique still. I used to work in healthcare. Medicare changes that stuff all the time. I would not give free offers for that because one, you got to worry about Medicare paying them the time and all this other stuff. My offer for them would be, Hey, how do you, Let's see, um, Medicare. Let me think about this for a second. I would pitch them like this. How would you like to make your Medicare billing issues re reduced? How would you like to get all the money that Medicare owes you? It's gotta be something like that. It's gotta be a pain point laced offer. How to make your Medicare billing easier. How to do your codes correctly. It's gotta be something like that. Like, hey, I'm a Medicare provider, so what? how to get your money faster, how to be compliant with Medicare. There's a lot of compliance issues with Medicare. So essentially you want to come in there and essentially say, I'm going to get you more money and I'm going to make your life easier. So that would be the thing. But that's pretty lucrative market, I would assume, because Medicare is really, really complicated. There's part, there's part A, part B. I don't know if there's a part C. I remember elderly people would come in and they would be confused and then I would have to talk to someone and then they would have to go to admissions and find the old lady that knew all the regs. 
So you got a good thing to sell. It's just you got to package it right. And you know, forget about compliance. It's save time, save money, make money. Those are the things you should pitch in your offer. Uh, Matthew Campbell, how did you improve your selling skills? Practice. Lots and lots of practice. You should forget about the website for now. You need to get on the phone and start calling doctors. And uh, I guess uh, the office manager and then find one that local, start local. Find one that you can get in there and talk to and maybe do what you do for free to get them as a reference, to get them on your website, do that. Because what's gonna happen is, I want you to think about how doctors operate. Since you have this knowledge, you already know how doctors operate. Doctors don't do shit. Their assistants do shit. The, the, the office manager does stuff. So you wanna make friends with those kind of people. Uh, Fonte Jones, hey Glenn, I stumbled across your YouTube video last week, so search it, open, learn a lot from you. Thanks for the newbie info, I need it, thanks. Okay, cool. Deirdre, you mentioned experienced YouTubers using this method. Would it be a good te technique for a person starting a new channel to discover what type of content works for them? Yes. All you need is three to five friends who will be honest with you. Make your video, don't upload it to YouTube. Put it on your Facebook page and say, look, I need honest feedback. Is this thing winning or does it suck? And just keep putting those videos on your website, uh, on your Facebook, and then the ones that people like, that's pretty good, upload that to YouTube. You can test the thumbnail there, you can test the title there, and thumbnails are about 35% of your views, the title could be 50%, and then some other stuff. I mean, thumbnails are super important. Because the offer, and this whole week and part of next week is gonna be about the offer. The offer is so important. It's more important than the website, it's more important than Facebook, it's more important than YouTube, because if you got a really good offer and you got a phone, you can make a lot of money. Just an offer in this phone, you can make a lot of money. Because um, one of the people that we were looking at, there was like, you don't have a website for Mac Daddy Media, right? And I was just like, we're gonna get to it. And they just looked at me like I was crazy because they didn't understand. You can make a lot of money without a website. I have some connections to reach out to. I was thinking about going to provider association and offering discounts to members to help spread the word faster, but local campaigning too. Now you want to go ahead and get you some advocates because this, this is how you should do your website. And we'll get into it a little bit more because I'm gonna bounce in a minute. Find someone local, ask them to go on camera and you just film yourself helping them do what they do. Put that on your Facebook page, put that on your website because I can tell you from experience you can have a shitty website, but you've got good content and a good offer, it'll convert to money. All right, so thank you folks for coming out. I will catch you later.